Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and I've been the site editor since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified ISF and THX professional calibrator with 19 years of experience. In today's video we have our review of the Sony A80J OLED TV. Before we talk about the performance of the Sony, if you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, then please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. You can also also find a link to our Patreon in the video description and don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners of this TV think about it after normal use in their own homes. We publish our in-depth TV reviews which include measurements and calibration results first on AV forums, usually a little while before our YouTube videos, so make sure you head over to check them out as they contain even more in-depth calibration details and testing. We reviewed the Sony A80J in January 2022. This may be Sony's step-down OLED model for 2021, sitting just below the flagship A90J, but it certainly doesn't mean it's a step-down in overall performance. Apart from losing the aluminium laminate heatsink that dons the A90J, the A80J keeps all the other features found on its big brother and it competes in the same area of the market as the Philips OLED 806, the Panasonic JZ1000 and LG's C1 OLED TV. The A80J is available in screen sizes of 55, 65 and 77 inches and as the new Bravia XR models are announced for 2022 this month at CES in Vegas, the A80J should become a bit of a bargain should you decide that all the features you want are here on the A80J and you're not tempted to wait for the new replacement model. The Sony Sports, Dolby Vision, HDR10 and Hybrid Log Gamma HLG HDR formats and includes IMAX enhanced certification along with a Netflix calibrated mode but there's no filmmaker mode. It's a shame that Sony never seems to take part in any industry-wide initiatives like the filmmaker mode, preferring to do their own thing like the custom mode. Audio-wise there is support for Dolby Atmos and calibration using the acoustic auto calibration system. The Cognitive Processor XR can also analyse the sound position of the signal so the sound matches precisely with the action on the screen. In addition, it upconverts any sound to 3D surround to deliver an immersive soundscape. And being a Sony OLED TV, the screen is the speaker thanks to the excellent Acoustic Surface Audio Plus. The Sony A80J has Google Smart TV that replaces the Android OS system seen in previous OLED models and we found the system worked well with no issues of slowdown or crashing and the entire OS felt fast and intuitive to use. Colour accuracy once calibrated is reference quality with SDR content, with HDR10 and Dolby Vision also looking superb with movie content. Sony's expertise in professional image quality and producing reference grading monitors certainly shines through in their consumer TVs and the A80J offers image quality that rivals its peers on the market and is a strong choice for those looking at image accuracy once calibrated for movie viewing. It also offers great connectivity and features for gaming but it does slightly lack the flexibility of the competing LG C1 in that regard. Plus the out of the box filmmaker mode is a lot more accurate on the LG compared to the cyan looking custom mode on the A80J. But in all other respects the Sony competes on a level playing field with slightly better colour accuracy and tone mapping compared to its peers. If you're looking for an accurate OLED TV for movie viewing and you can't quite stretch to the A90J or the similar panels with extra brightness, the Sony A80J makes a very strong case for movie fans with excellent picture quality and it comes highly recommended for those reasons. Looking at the grayscale we have a good tracking towards the standards but with a little too much blue in the brighter areas of the image along with a deficit of red. Our Delta E errors are higher than the visible threshold of 3 in the brightest part of the scale which translate to a slightly blue cyan tint to on-screen images which will be noticeable for those used to watching accurate image quality. 
Gamma also tracks towards BT1886 with just a slight brightening at some points, but that's not visible with actual TV and film content. Sony aims for a different white point on their TVs, but we test to D65, which is the industry standard. The Rec 709 colour gamut results are a little bit off in terms of hue at most points because the white point is pulled towards blue thanks to the grayscale. The main issues within the graph are cyan, magenta and green hue errors with slight saturation errors with red and blue. This is also caused by the blue in the white point and should be corrected when we calibrate to the industry standard D65 white point. For an out of the box preset, custom is not quite as accurate as filmmaker mode which is found on competing TVs. As you can see in the graph, we were able to get reference level results for the grayscale with Delta E errors well under the visible threshold of 3 with an average error of 0.5, which means there's no visible errors seen in normal TV and film content that we viewed on the Sony. Gamma is also tracking very well with no visible issues present. Our Rec 709 colour gamut results are also reference level, with no major issues found within the gamut results, and the Delta E errors are well under 1. There are a couple of 100% issues in the graph, but these do not impact at all when watching TV and film content on the A80J, and again, we have reference level results. The Sony XR880J has a peak brightness of 640 nits at 1%, 670 nits on a 2% window and 640 nits on a 5% window, with a drop down to 591 nits on the industry standard 10% window size. With a 100% window size, the brightness is 135 nits, and these figures are on par with the LG C1 and the Philips 806 and what we would expect from this type of panel. The PQ EOTF results are also very good with tracking following the ST2084 standard with a roll off to the peak brightness. There is an effect with the ABL or the automatic brightness limiter kicking in with the highest peak brightness in the results and this is less visible with actual HDR content when you're viewing it on the TV. Overall, the performance with HDR is very good and in line with its peers. The DCI P3 colour gamut within BT2020 is also decent with all the saturation points landing where they should be or very close to where they should be. There is a slight undersaturation of red at 50% and 75% with 100% green, cyan and yellow being slightly short of the full gamut size. However, we didn't have any visible issues when watching HDR content on the A80J and the colours looked natural and vivid. We measured BT2020 at 70% XY and 73% UV, with P3 coming in at 96% XY and 99% UV. The Sony A80J is not a master series model and it sits below the A90J in that regard, plus it doesn't feature the aluminium laminate layer to dissipate heat for a brighter HDR performance, however, it does have all the other features of the A90J. This results in an OLED TV that competes strongly against its peers such as the LG C1, the Panasonic JZ1000 and the Philips OLED 806. Sadly, the A80J is not quite as accurate out of the box as the LG C1 or the Philips, which feature filmmaker mode. The Sony custom preset has a little bit too much blue in the grayscale in comparison, which is visible as a cyan tint to white, which looks cooler than the warm D65 white which is required by the industry standards. Screen uniformity on the A80J is also very good with no obvious signs of dirty screen effect DSE, or banding. On a 5% slide, we could see very faint bands which is common with all OLED panels, but these were not visible with normal viewing material, even in dim viewing conditions with dark scenes. Other brightness levels were also clean and 100% white was bright without any obvious colour shift when watching directly. With SDR, HDR and TV show viewing, the Sony is a stunning OLED TV that produces superb calibrated image quality with fantastic blacks and excellent colour accuracy. Skin tones look realistic with black levels that are deep but with excellent just above black shadow details. 
The motion is also first class with 24 frames per second movies and 50 hertz broadcast TV shows. We didn't notice any instances of judder or frame skipping present with motion flow switched off. If you are a film fan looking for an incredibly cinematic experience with SDR movie content on Blu-ray disc or streaming, the A80J is an excellent choice. With HDR10 and Dolby Vision content, the image quality is again excellent and it competes with its peers in terms of image accuracy and black levels. Peak brightness performance is also excellent with detail visible in the brightest parts of the image without the tone mapping lowering the overall brightness of the image to allow this. As such, the dynamic range is very good indeed and in isolation, it produces an image most users would be very happy with overall. The Sony A80J is an elegant looking OLED TV with an almost bezel-less screen surface with a thin 1mm metal strip surrounding the edge of the panel. There is a small Sony logo at the bottom left of the screen side and that's it when it comes to what's on screen, it's a very minimalist look indeed. The stand feet are also adjustable and can be placed in a number of positions depending on your use case. We use the middle setting with our TV stand but you can have them further towards the end of the panel or raised up to lift the TV high enough to fit a soundbar underneath. There's a selection of connections to the rear which are downwards and sideways facing. To the side we have a CI slope, a 3.5mm legacy AV input S centre speaker in, a 3.5mm headphone jack, two USB slots and an HDMI 2.0B input. To the bottom we have a further USB slot and HDMI 2.0B port, two HDMI 2.1 slots, an optical digital out and a LAN with an RF and satellite antenna rounding things off. The supplied remote control is a nice plastic affair with a clear button layout and intuitive feel with all the prominent keys easy to find within thumb reach when held in one hand. It has a nice brushed effect to the plastic and it sits neatly in the hand with a decent weight. We go into much more detail with our full written review so head over to avforums.com to read it and thanks for watching.